Chess friends, today, I want to share the top 5 fastest checkmates in the king's gambit, which are the most powerful and decisive opening moves in this strategy. The king's gambit starts with moving your pawn to f4 and then f5, leading to a risky but potentially rewarding situation. If you know how to play it right, it's actually more dangerous for your opponent. We'll look at games played by very skilled players, with ratings of 2500 and 2700, who ended up losing quickly. Let's dive into the first example where the player has a rating of 2500 and see what happens, after white captures the pawn on f4, they then play knight to f3 to protect that square, stopping black from checking there, black responds aggressively with pawn to g5, signaling that white won't easily regain the pawn, this move also prepares black to advance the pawn to g4, pushing the knight back, and setting up for a strong check with the queen at h4, because of this. Many players avoid playing the king's gambit altogether, however, there are effective strategies for white to counter this, and I will share my favorite one with you, white plays knight c3, setting a sneaky trap that doesn't initially look like one, it seems like a typical move to develop pieces, then, black plays pawn to g4, aiming to attack the knight, if the knight moves, black plans to bring out the queen with queen to h4, putting the king in check, and it appears that white is in a tough spot. Moving the king forward to e2 would be risky, exposing it to attacks, and blocking other pieces from moving, playing pawn to g3 also seems problematic because if black captures the pawn with pawn takes g3, white can't recapture without losing the rook, if white doesn't recapture, black will still check the king on the next move, making it look like white is on the verge of defeat, but then, white responds with queen takes g4, by attacking the queen with your piece, you launch a counterattack. If black decides to exchange queens, you'll enter an end game with a lead in development, which is good for you, especially if black goes for the queen exchange on g4, however, black might try a seemingly stronger move by pushing pawn to g2, giving a check and seemingly sacrificing the queen, this move aims to regain the queen and capture the rook on h1, making it look like black has outplayed white and gained a major advantage with an extra rook, but there's a catch, after the move queen to h5. He has no effective way to save the threatened pawn, so, white can actually win, despite being a rook down, black's moves seem strong and logical, but they can lead to a trap that even high rated players might fall into and let me share a quote with you. Stand up for what you believe in, even if it means standing alone. What can black do to prevent white's queen from moving to f7? Playing knight h6 doesn't really solve black's problems, because after white plays d4, white can capture that knight. Then, white is set to move queen takes f7, backed by the knight from the e-file, hence, knight h6 isn't a viable defense, in this situation, black, being a skilled player, opts for a smarter approach by moving bishop e7, by moving bishop e7, black prepares an escape route for the king, if white simply takes the piece, the king can escape, ending white's attack and potentially giving black a winning advantage due to the extra rook. Therefore, playing queen takes f7 directly isn't effective. However, capturing with knight takes f7 can still lead to victory for white, black counters with knight f6, aiming to push away the queen and then take the knight, which would likely lead to a win for black, but then, white plays knight d6, delivering a discover check and double check at the same time, this forces the king to move, and it cannot go to certain squares because queen f7 would then be checkmate, in the match. Black moved the king to d8. Unexpectedly, the queen moved to e8, creating a memorable moment where the queen sacrifices herself for the king's safety, with knight f7 following, white secures a win, this brutal variation can indeed be effective, even against skilled players. Let's dive into another of white's traps, which is equally entertaining, in this line, black follows the main strategy, responding e takes f5, knight f3 and g5. While white moves bishop c4, a classic strategy used by legendary players like Morphy, yet it remains a lethal tactic. What's fascinating here is white's calm approach regardless of black's moves, for instance, when black advances knight g4, threatening the knight, white remains unbothered, white simply castles, willingly sacrificing the knight, after black captures the knight, white continues nonchalantly with knight c3, focusing on developing the knight and essentially inviting black to continue disrupting white's position, indeed. 
The most common move for black in this situation is to capture the pawn with pawn takes g2, as it appears to be a strong move, however, this turns out to be a critical mistake, although it's hard for black to realize it, instead of simply taking the pawn back or moving the rook to f4, white has a more powerful strategy, playing bishop takes f7, at this stage, white is significantly ahead in development while black is still not fully set up on the board. This advantage allows white to aggressively push the attack and aim for a quick checkmate, after bishop takes f7, which lures the king out, white doesn't just reclaim the pawn but combines the action with a potent attack, capturing with the rook at f4 next, this move isn't just about regaining material but also setting up a strong offensive, if the king tries to move away, white can unleash the queen, leading to an inevitable checkmate in the following move. Demonstrating a straightforward linear checkmate. Backtracking a bit, it seems logical for black to play knight f6, but even this move doesn't solve the problems due to white's pawn push to e5, this creates a pin, rendering the knight immobile, white is set to capture it, leaving black in a losing position, and let me tell you a quote. Focus on your goal, don't look in any direction but ahead. In the game, black opted for bishop e7, but white didn't immediately take the knight, instead, white chose a stronger move, queen h5, maintaining the pin and adding pressure with a check, forcing the king to retreat to f8, white takes the pawn on f6, and for black, recapturing leads to disaster, white has the option to play knight d5, threatening to win the bishop should black recapture, instead, black moves bishop d6. Attempting to create some offensive opportunities, but this doesn't alleviate the pressure, white then places the queen on h6, directly targeting checkmate, the king moves to e8, and white pushes the pawn to f7, when the king steps to e7, white delivers a beautiful checkmate with the knight moving to d5, this showcases white's strategy of calm and composed gameplay, essentially saying to black, go ahead, take the knight, disturb my castle if you like. White remains unfazed and then swiftly moves to checkmate black, many opponents might choose to avoid the main lines of the king's gambit due to their complexity and sharp nature, opting instead for the king's gambit declined, in this approach, black might protect the pawn by moving the knight to d6 or knight c6, actually, knight c6 is one of the most popular responses from black in this situation, following that, white can play knight f3, again targeting the pawn, after black defends it. White proceeds with bishop c4, the game under discussion involved a black player rated 2400, and it demonstrates how challenging the situation can become for black, after knight f6 white proceeds with pawn to d3, a common response from black is bishop g4, which might seem beneficial at first but can actually turn against them, white simply castles, and black may play bishop b7 followed by white's knight c3, both sides making standard moves, importantly. The bishop at g4 doesn't pose a serious threat to white, who can always play h3, prompting an exchange that usually works in white's favor, black might then play knight d4, aiming to use the pin and start an offensive, however, this can lead to trouble for black because, after white captures on e5 and black recaptures, white can unleash a striking combination beginning with bishop takes f7 check, this move is particularly powerful because if the king captures on f7, white plays knight takes e5 check. Delivering a check to the king and forking the bishop, turning the tables in white's favor, when the king moves away, you play knight takes g4, capturing the pawn on f7 and exposing the black king, typically, black responds with knight takes g4, hoping to regain the pawn with knight takes c2, although they get their pawn back, they fall into a checkmate with e6, this is a nice tactic, moving on, let's talk about trap number 4, which is quite impressive. It was executed by a player in a blindfold simultaneous game, which is truly amazing. In another game played by Sakar Turd, a strong player from the past, the opponent chose not to accept the gambit and instead went for the declined king's gambit, the game followed a similar pattern to our previous analysis, bishop g4, pawn d3, bishop e7, and then white castled. Black's move knight to d4, often played, turned out to be a bad choice, however, in this game, black tried knight to h5, aiming to pressure white's position, by attacking the f4 pawn, black hoped to gain an advantage, but white responded aggressively with pawn takes e5, leading to an exchange with the knight, initially, it seems like black is launching a strong attack, but sacrificing the queen with knight takes e5 leads to an intriguing sequence, after bishop takes d1, 
there's bishop takes f7 check. Resembling legal's checkmate but with more complexity, it's not easy to foresee all outcomes, the obvious move is king to f8, yet there's no immediate checkmate, and white must continue the attack despite being down a queen, white opts for bishop takes h5, a discovered check to the king, black responds with bishop f6, appearing fine temporarily, white executed a clever sacrifice by playing rook to f6, breaking through black's defense, when black played the natural move queen takes f6, it fell into a trap. White played knight to d7, creating a fork against the king and queen, even after black's king moved to e7, white's knight took on f6, regaining the queen and defending the important pawn on h5, if black had captured the knight on f6, white would recapture, leaving white with a significant material advantage, in the actual game, black captured the pawn instead, then, white played bishop h6 check, forcing the black king to move, however, any move to the g-file fails due to bishop f7, leading to a simple checkmate, so, the king moved forward, and then came knight to d5 check, the only option was for the king to go to e6, next, there was bishop to f7 check, continually putting pressure on the king, when the king took the pawn on e5, it wasn't immediately clear how white could win the game. However, a sudden move with the pawn to c3 led black to resign, despite black having a material advantage and being in a position to make the next move, there was no way to defend against bishop f4 checkmate on the following move, it was a beautiful attack by white, executed in a blindfold simultaneous game by Zakata, which is quite impressive, this demonstrates that these tactics can be effective even against highly skilled opponents, like the 2700 rated black player in this case. Black opts for the main line with pawn to g5, white follows with bishop to c4, a move we previously discussed where white is prepared to sacrifice the knight for rapid development, in this game, however, white plays a more solid move with queen takes f3, this move may seem stable considering the wild nature of this line, and let me tell you a quote about life. You can make excuses or you can make progress you choose. Afterward, white indeed sacrifices the knight, but you can observe that white's major pieces are aligning along the f-file, potentially leading to a checkmate, therefore, many opponents will play bishop h6 here, aiming to defend the pawn and, more importantly, to block the f-file for white's pieces, next, you play pawn to d4, seizing control of the center and preparing to capture the pawn with your bishop, black's response varies, but a common and natural move is knight to c6. Developing a knight and eyeing the d4 square, here's where the trap comes in, disguised as a normal move, white plays knight to c3, seemingly just mirroring black's move, it appears innocent, but it's actually quite cunning, when black takes the pawn on d4, seemingly benefiting from the sacrifice and threatening the queen, it looks advantageous, however, this favorable position for black collapses due to the surprising move bishop to f7, indeed. While the move bishop to f7 may come as a shock in this specific position, it's actually a common tactic and attacking pattern in the king's gambit, this strategy aims to exploit the open f-file and dismantle black's pawn shield around the king, setting the stage for an attack along the f-file, with the queen still under threat, white delivers a check to the black king with queen to h5, white now waits, as the exposed king is vulnerable regardless of where it moves, wherever the king goes. White responds with bishop f4, setting up for a checkmate along the f-file in just a few moves, leaving black with no defense, in the game, black captured the bishop on f4, prompting white to recapture, thus renewing the threat of rook to f7, black's attempt to defend with knight f6 was met by queen g5 check, forcing the king to f7, a simple move, rook to f1, set up a decisive threat as black was already in a dire situation, after rook takes f7, there would be a checkmate in just a few moves, however. In the actual game, black played queen to e7, still hoping to find a way out, white proceeded with rook takes f6, leading to king e8, and then knight to d5, bringing the final piece into the attack and pressuring the queen, black's only option seemed to be queen takes e4, now, as a puzzle for the day, what would be the winning continuation for white in this position? Please share your answer in the comments below, and don't forget to, to like and subscribe to my channel, wish you all the best, bye bye see ya.